So as we all witnessed, in episode 127 of Dragon Ball Super, Android 17 in his battle against Jiren gave his life to protect Goku, Vegeta, and Frieza. 17 has been named the MVP of Universe 7 by the fandom thus far, and truthfully, he's been an absolute shock of a pleasure to watch in this arc. When we saw that we were getting 17 and 18 on Universe 7's team, most of us popped to see Android 17 return, and couldn't wait to see him fight again. But to think that we got all of this shine out of him is unbelievable and incredibly unexpected. It's been fantastic though, he's been utilised from all those familiar skills to entertaining means, and for such a wasted character in the Android arc of Dragon Ball Z, the writing has really breathed new life into his character and given us all something to become invested in once more. But that's not the only reason seeing one of our new favourite characters give up his life in his arc really hurts. But leave a comment down below to tell me how you guys feel about Seventeen's use in the tournament, and the way it all ended for him, and just how emotional he felt about it. Seventeen's entire character since being reintroduced has mostly been about his family and his love for protecting the island of where the rare animals are and keeping them safe from poachers. The guy is truly selfless and caring about his adopted children and wanting to treat his family to a vacation on the sea. Hence why some of his final words are so crucial, have given up on that cruise. But not only that, during the tournament he has been consistently saving the other fighters and even Frieza throwing rocks at him and protecting them all from elimination and giving us some epic moments with Topo amongst others. But now that Seventeen is gone, you can really feel that missing gap and that asset to Universe 7's team. It hurts so much because now all three Universe 7 remaining fighters are predominantly selfish fighters, Seventeen being the last selfless one there. Frieza is only really out for himself, Vegeta is often charging into fights without a plan, which of course happened in the last episode and put Seventeen in danger in the first place. Goku, the controversially selfish character, who's only really interested in his own fetish for fighting stronger opponents and being pushed to his limit. Whilst Goku has saved others in the tournament so far, he hasn't actually tried to jump in front of a bullet for any of his teammates yet, most likely because he logically assumes that he's the most vital part of the team, and to be fair, rightly so. The other reason that Seventeen's absence now hits home so hard is because, for truth, in Dragon Ball Super we've only really witnessed three deaths of protagonists. Piccolo, Future Bulma, and now Seventeen. If there are any others, I actually apologise, but I can only really remember the three and those are the only ones that stand out to me anyway. Piccolo's was surprising for us due to having played out differently to how he didn't die in the Resurrection F movie, but of course nothing really that emotional happened with his death. It was a brief, abrupt thing that we weren't really expecting, and because of this we weren't really invested in Piccolo's characters in the first two arcs either, so the death was sort of meaningless and just an excuse to kind of say, oh look, we've killed somebody. But it was also slightly derailed due to the fact that Piccolo's been sidelined so many times for various circumstances, whether it being disarmed by Raditz, blasted by Nappa, ravaged by Frieza and then being death-beamed by Frieza, killed in the future by the androids, drowned by Cell, smashed in Dabura's spit, absorbed by Super Boo, and then later killed by Kid Boo after they've saved him out of Super Boo's stomach. And that's not mentioning all the times he's been bodied in the movies, and not even the time he died in GT, and not even King Piccolo's death in Dragon Ball. But I digress. Future Bulmers was quite tough because of our attachment to Future Trunks and seeing such horrible stuff happen to him so quickly. But because we knew our Bulma back in our timeline was okay, it softened the blow, and having barely any time to regrow attached to a new character has also dampened the moment of her death. So looking realistically, Seventeen's death in Super has been one of the only impactful and excuse the wording here, but well executed deaths in the show. It's emotional because he gives his life by choice to save the others, gives up his dream with his family, and provides us with the mystery to whether we'll even actually see him again. And here's the important thing, he's one of the few characters in Dragon Ball we don't actually know what happens to at the end of Z, and this really pads out the moment. He might not come back guys, this is the thing. Logically in Dragon Ball history, we are going to see him again, but we don't know. Regardless of any other ways this could have been avoided in terms of the story plot and whatnot, whether Goku could have had enough energy to instant transmission them all away, or whatever, this has been one of the final shoves we really needed to cement our attachment to Super's Android 17, and that's Super's Android 17, and Dragon Ball Super's Android 17, not Super Android 17, ha ha. But anyway, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more, and to start your training on World King Kanji's planet, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye!